Have you ever created your report and looked at the slices across your page and thought, this just looks a little bit messy? Well, today I'm going to show you how to create a nice little hidden slicer panel that you can create using bookmarks in Power BI. So let's get started. If you're finding my videos for the first time, make sure you hit like and subscribe below to be notified of future videos. So as I said, today we're going to work with bookmarks in Power BI and create a nice little slicer or hidden slicer panel off to the left hand side. So to get started with this, what we're going to use is our three slices across the top. And this is just an image here on the left hand side, which I've got off the internet. Uh, and it's just a little hamburger like what you might see on websites when you're using your phone. And so this is going to represent sort of a menu button, which we can use uh, to bring up our slices. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a shape. And it's really nice that Power BI have added a lot of new shapes recently um, that are a lot similar or more similar to what you might find in something like PowerPoint. So these work really cool, or look really well, and they look a lot better than the previous visuals we used to have or previous shapes we used to have. So we're going to add this uh, rounded rectangle here. I'm going to remove the background. And there are a bunch of extra. Um, you can change the shape, for example, within here. Um, you can change the color of your outline. So for example, I can make it white and make it a bit thicker. And I can change the fill. But what I'm going to do with the fill is I'm just going to make it slightly transparent. So there we go. And then you can also add shadows as well, for example, or a glow. I'm just going to add the shadow here and I'm just going to leave it like that. A lot of the default settings for that. So that's step one, which is going to be our little uh, slicer panel that shows up. And now we can just add our slices onto here. And for this, I'm going to add each of them one after the other. And make sure they're nicely aligned, hopefully. And then the last thing I need to do is send my shape to the back. So now we have our little panel set up. Uh, what I'm going to do is one last thing is I'm going to add a button. And all I'm going to do is just add this back button. And it's going to be nice and small at the top of our little panel here. And we'll put it on the left hand side here. So. Uh, with some of these things, I'll often just use more of a, um, just be able to have the ability to click anywhere on the shape. But for this, I'm just going to show you guys how to create it with also using the second button. So let's have a little bit bigger. We'll try and make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see and use. There we go. So just like that. So now that we have that, what we can do is work with our button here. So this is going to be our... Uh, our filter panel and so what I'm going to do actually first is we're going to select all of our slices the shape and the button go to format click group and we're going to group them together so when we use selection here we'll be able to see this group and that's going to relate to our filter pane or our slicer pane so let's call it that and then so the next thing we need to do is we're going to add one more little button here and this is going to be a blank one. So the blank button is, oh, I need to make sure that's not in the group. Let's ungroup that guy and then regroup everything again. And format group. All right, so now we've got our blank button here on the screen. Uh, we'll just resize it to cover over our menu button. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to remove the outline in the background. Uh, but the cool thing about these blank buttons is we can change the state. So we're going to keep the default state as just clear. But then on our hover state, we're going to change the color to white. And we're going to make it 50% transparent. So when we hover over, we can see it change. So we know that this thing does something. And then the last thing is on press, we're going to make this 75%. So if I click it, we can see the color change there. So you can see that the click has happened. Cool. 
so now we have that. We have oh, these guys don't look like they've grouped together again. Let's make sure they all do. And we'll go format again, group, group. Okay, there we go. So we've got our group, and what we're going to use is uh, we're going to go to view here, and then we're going to click bookmarks. So the bookmark is going to take a snapshot of what the screen looks like, and we will use that. Oh, I've chosen the wrong button again. Let's ungroup it. Let's see if we'll just do that, and we'll do everything. Okay, not that one, this one. Okay, uh, so we're going to use the bookmark to create a uh, snapshot of what the screen looks like and use that to show and hide based on uh, what we have set. So if we do this now, uh, what we're going to see here is if I hide this, everything will disappear. So we're going to call this bookmark and we'll go, um, we'll go slices hide. And what we're going to do is we're going to change, get rid of data, and we're going to keep the display as is. And we'll just click update. And then we're going to show our slicer pane again. And we're just going to call this one slices show. Again, we're going to change data, and I'll just click update again. So now if I click on slices hide, it's going to hide it, show, it'll show it. So the first step we can do is we can add that functionality to our back button. So we'll click that, we'll go back to format button here, and action at the bottom, we're going to choose type of a bookmark, and then we'll choose our bookmark. So we want this one to hide our slices, so let's click that one. So now if I'm holding control on desktop, and then I click on that, it'll hide our visuals, or our slicer panel. So then we do the same thing for our blank button that we set up. We choose a bookmark, show slices, hit control again, and when I click, our slices appear. So you can now work with these slices as you would normally and select everything that you would, and it'll affect the visuals that you have on your page. And then when you're done, you just click hide, and your, your slices are now hidden again, and you're left with all the visuals on your page gives you a little bit more room on the page to do what you would like and create as many or, or the visuals you need to be able to represent uh, the information that you're kind of trying to get across to either the coach or the person uh, uh, that requires that information. So just to recap, we have used a little button here, a couple of little buttons here to create a hidden slicer panel off to the side of our uh, report. To do that, we have used a group so if we go back into our selection, we've used a grouped set of visuals that we've called slicer pane, which has our selections or our slices, a button and a shape. And then from there, we've created two bookmarks, uh, one with all of our visuals hidden, which we've hidden using our selection panel. And we've always deselected data. And then we've created another one with our, visual, our slices up and showing, which we've called slices show. We've then created or added those actions to the buttons using the bookmark type. So again, if you guys found this video useful, make sure you hit like and subscribe below. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time where we will continue to power performance through data. Thank you.